Hi, are you a pharmacist or a recent pharmacy graduate trying to decide what you want to do in your career next? How about becoming a UK registered pharmacist? In this video, I'm going to share all the detailed steps and the requirements of becoming a GPHC registered pharmacist in the UK. So let's dive into it. So in this video, I'll be covering mainly the entry requirements, the cost of the procedure, the duration of the procedure, um, what is the scope of pharmacist in the UK, and also the two main updates that were shared by GPHC very recently. So if you are a pharmacist who is trained outside of UK, Europe, or any EEA countries, and you want to come to UK and become a pharmacist, you have to go through OSPAP. OSPAP is the Overseas Pharmacist Assessment Program. This is mainly a one year postgraduate MSc degree or a nine months postgraduate diploma course that is offered by the GPHC and offered at four different colleges in the UK. By which what happens is that you get to convert your outside UK degree into a UK degree and thereby undergo a foundational training for a year and then become registered in the UK. So in simple terms, it can be said that to become a registered pharmacist in the UK, a student must complete the OSPAP degree and then undergo one year of foundational training placement, pass the GPHC registration exam, and boom, you are a registered pharmacist in the UK. I've been mentioning GPHC. So what exactly is GPHC? GPHC is the governing council and OSPAP is the course that the overseas pharmacists have to do and it is offered by four different colleges. Those colleges are Aston University, University of Sunderland, University of Hertfordshire, and also University of Brighton. So these are the four universities that offer OSPAP under GPHC rule. So if that is clear, let's move on to the entry requirements. If you are from India, you can apply for OSPAP with a B Pharm degree as well as a Pharm D degree. The D Pharm degree does not qualify for it. So B Pharm, Pharm D, and even M Pharm those students can apply for an OSPAP DD and become a registered pharmacist in the UK. Now let's move on to the steps. What are the steps involved in the whole licensing and the conversion program? First step, if you think about applying for an OSPAP course, you must first apply to the GPHC, pass their education process, which involves assessing the qualification. Here they will consider all the previous qualifications, work experiences, your fitness to practice as a pharmacist in the UK, your English language competency. You will need to pay a fee of 739 pounds. That's around 74,000 pound um, Indian monies, which will cover the cost of processing your application. When you apply to the GPHC, you will make a preferred institution as your choice that you want to study OSPAP at. So like I said, there are four main universities that offer OSPAP course. University of Sunderland, University of Aston, University of Brighton, and University of Hertfordshire. So you have to do your own research to find which university is right for you. Now the GPHC will send your form to the institution that you preferred. Like suppose I chose University of Sunderland. So GPHC is going to send my all information to University of Sunderland. Uh, and they will continue all their further assessments and the selected university that's the University of Sunderland is going to send me an application form from there so as part of my application the university will ask me to send all the copy of my GPHC approved education letter proof of the English language which is my IELTS score and once the offer has been made the university is going to ask me to send a good contact or the good standing uh, certificate from the nearby police station uh, which is in from my home country now comes the most important part that is the interview all the uh, offers are subject to interview you have to pass the interview interview usually takes around november and february and you have to make sure that you're available to participate and attend these interviews once you're done with the interview, if you are successful, you will be sent an updated offer letter uh, removing all the conditions. And if you have any additional uh, conditions that you have to satisfy, you have to complete it within the given time by the university or else there could be chances of losing the seat itself. Okay, now you have met all the conditions and now you will be sent the CAS, a CAS letter. That is the 
confirmation of acceptance of studies from the university this is usually sent around end of march starting of april and after you get this you have to go to the uh, visa office to apply for a uk student visa to come to the uk once you have done that university will get in touch with you um, around the induction as well as the arrival procedure etc so that's about coming to the uk now comes the major part so after completing the ospap you will move to the next stage of your training that is the one year of foundational training so all the ospap graduates must complete this year to register and practice as a pharmacist in the uk and here is the main key step so the your foundational training must be arranged even before you commence the ospap let's go a few steps back to understand where exactly you have to register to get your foundational training placement so let me put all of this in context suppose let's assume you are going to start your ospap in september 2024 now you have to make sure that your application for the foundational training is already registered in oriel by june 2024 so even before your course has started you are already registered in oriel you have shared all the details and to register in the oriel you need to get the gphc acceptance letter and also the university acceptance letter along with that you have to submit all the uh, previous work experience uh, work experience as well as referral letters one is self reference as well as one is from the university or from the work so all of these details need to be added in oriel by june 2024 now comes the september 2024 when you are actually starting the course that is the ospap course soon after you have arrived in september 2024 soon after the ospap course has started you will write the first set of exam that is for the foundational training placement around like october end or end of september you will write this exam and based on this exam you will get the results in november 2024 which is again one month after here you will be made aware of where exactly is your placement going to be there are going to be three waves of placement offers the first set of uh, placements if you don't like where you are um, uh, allotted you can go for the second wave and even then if you are not preferring the second wave allotments also you can go for the third wave so even before you have completed the ospap just within the two months of arrival in the uk after the start of your course itself you will know where exactly you are going to start your placement in now after knowing that you have to around like march next year march you have to get in touch with your employers make sure that they are also welcoming you they are also ready to induct you into the new placement offers when you are done with the ospap course before you move to the uh, training you will already be moving from the student visa to the tier a tier 2 visa which will be offered by the uh, employers during the foundational training itself you will be in the tier 2 visa which is a safe and secure way of living in the uk because the tier 2 visa uh, if it is if you are there in the tier 2 visa for like next 5 years you have the chances of settling in the uk stress free what happens with most other courses is that you tend to stay in the tier a uh, four visa as a student then get the uh, post study work visa for another two years and then try to search for a sponsorship by the employer but here itself after you are done with the ospap course before you move on to the um, the foundational training you have to convert from the tier 4 visa to tier 2 visa which will be offered by your employer already and it is up to them if they want to sponsor you for one year two year three year or five years so it is a completely up to the those employers but even then it is stress free you are making us a very uh, safe and secure job uh, decisions already and once you are done with the one year of foundational training you will have to do the final exam that is the uh, gphc registration exam and once you pass that boom you are the uk registered pharmacist so it is a very simple process but there are many important details and steps that you need to take care of so now coming to uh, talk a bit more detail about what is entailed in the ospap course ospap is a full time post graduate course you can take it as a pg diploma or an msc course a pg diploma would be uh, like for 9 months and the msc course would be for 12 months earlier the international students were allowed to take only msc uh, because they they only then you will get the post study work visa 
but now the rules have changed you can go for the nine months pg diploma course also and here the the basic understanding that you need to have is that you don't need the post ready work visa because after you're done with the ospap you're moving into the one year of foundational training by which you would have already converted from the tier 2 visa tier 4 visa to tier 2 visa so you don't need the post study work visa and the results of which will be told to you just after coming to the uk just after you are starting with the started with the ospap course within two months you will be told about it and you you can study the entire ospap stress free knowing that you have moved on to uh, tier 2 visa very quickly after starting with the course so that is what you have to understand and talking a bit about the what's uh, what is there in ospap it is mostly the learning hours of like from monday to friday depends on the university that you go to make sure that you understand it is a very intense course uh, doing a part time along with this course would be kind of hard uh, uh, so you have to keep that in mind um, usually the courses include the course includes seminars tutorials lab works practicals online activities reading uh, also simulations on how you would perform in a real life clinical settings um, then also having the mock hospital ward uh, rounds so all of those kind of uh, real life practical ex exa examples and instances would be placed to you and you will have a great understanding of how the uk pharmacist um, uh, environment is and you will be prepared to do the uh, examination as well as move into the uh, foundational training period very quickly so it is a great great course a more safe and secure uh, course as well coming to the colleges i already mentioned what which colleges are offering this course this is the university of sunderland university of aston university of brighton as well as university of Hertfordshire. so these colleges are placed in different parts of uk they are not clustered in the same place so you, it's up to you you have any family friends uh, or um, any previous uh, uh, students who, who whom you got touch, uh, in touch with to understand about which place will be right for you you have to do your own research um, it is up to your, based on your preference that the gphc is going to allot you to which college you have to do the ospap exam and coming to the cost of the whole procedure like i said you can do a nine months course or a one year course if you're doing a nine months course it is much uh, uh, less expensive and if you're doing a one year course it is more expensive since you have to do a dissertation as well for university of sunderland the msc is 16500 uh, gbp that's pounds uh, that's like around 17 lakhs indian monies but based on the conversion there could be more that you have to uh, like consider uh, for pg diploma they give it at 11000 pounds for the uh, university of aston this is the msc is offered at 22425 like around 23 lakhs uh, for pg diploma it's like uh, for 15 15 lakhs yes then in brighton uh, university of brighton i was not sure of what they mean by msc pg diploma because it's kind of confusing they say the cost of the entire course would be uh, 16900 so it's considered to be like 17 lakhs i guess this is a course for um, pg diploma i am they haven't mentioned that very clearly and even for uh, university of Hertfordshire, they have just mentioned the pg diploma pharmacy is for 14 250 so i think it is for 15 lakhs coming to the success rate uh, in may 2023 the nhs england said that it was looking to uh, increase the international uh, recruitment of pharmacists as they plan to grow the pharmacy workforce which is kind of interesting because it means that there are more opportunities for overseas qualified pharmacists in the coming years and also there was a very interesting data that i saw in the gphc they said around 65 percentage of the ospap applications since 2021 is coming to uh, them from india nigeria pakistan and all of those countries so it means that there is a lot of uh, interest that has been developed recently in becoming a uk registered pharmacist so what does the ospap ospap qualified pharmacists uh, get to do in the uk they can work in the community pharmacy they can work in the hospital pharmacy uh, they can also work in the primary as well as in secondary care so a lot of opportunities and based on the data that i just shared with you um, you can see that more and more opportunities are being um, uh, developed as there is a lot of need 
for the pharmacists to help the already burdened uh, healthcare system in the UK. Pharmacists can lend a lot of help to the nurses and to the doctors. So it is it is based on this understanding that NHS is creating more opportunities for pharmacists. Like I said in the starting of this video, there are um, two main updates that you have to consider if you are trying to make a OSPAP application uh, in uh, 2024 and in 25. GPHC just released saying that they are already burdened and are oversubscribed to this course and due to which they cannot guarantee a seat in 2024 in 2025. So to avoid a, such a problem because if you have already uh, spent money, the money is uh, non-refundable and they will not be able to do an eligibility assessment or, on that. So GPHC suggests that it is better to get in touch with the university of your preferred choice like suppose there are four universities and you get in touch with one of the university check their uh, availability if there is any seats left to join for 2024 or 2025 only then make the application to gphc to do the eligibility assessment and send them the um, fee for that otherwise they say that it is not guaranteed even if you make the assessment make the application to gphc we cannot guarantee that you would get a place for 2024 and even for 2025 so please keep that in mind second update is that you have to use oriel oriel is the um, place where you have you can subscribe or get registered to find the foundational training placements earlier it used to be that most of the most of the uh, employers would get registered they would publish their details on oriel some of them would not uh, and be, because the international students could get in touch with the non-subscribed uh, employers and try to get a placement now from 2024 onwards there is no way that you can uh, get the placement outside of oriel so you have to register to oriel and it has to be done way ahead of the start of your course and you have to register you have to send them the details you have to keep up with all the notification that oriel sends you and um, once you are here you have to complete the exam just after joining the course and then identify of the placement where you're going to be placed and which employer is right for you this is to avoid any kind of bias uh, so that all the international students and the people who are already there in the uk get their placements equally based on their um, um, credibility and on their judgments how they have answered the questions so it is based on those rankings that you get the placement this is very important that you register to oriel and get the placements uh, in the right order that they have sent so these are the two main updates shared by GPHC very recently please keep that in mind and I hope that this video was very helpful I wish you all the best and if you are coming to UK in 2024 or 2025 you'll be becoming a registered pharmacist in the UK I wish you all the very best please share your thoughts and comments in the uh, comment box below so stay tuned till we meet next ciao